Michelle Zahner, crying in H Mart. Enter a world where healing and connection come from a place you might not expect, the bustling aisles of an Asian supermarket in the United States. Crying in H Mart takes you on a raw journey through love, loss, and self-discovery as Michelle Zahner learns the importance of her Korean heritage through the lens of food and family. In this powerful memoir, you'll find insightful reflections on grief, culture, and identity as Zahner navigates the complexities of her relationship with her late mother. Prepare to explore the intertwining nature of food, memory, and tradition as you savor every bite of this deeply emotional tale. Rediscovering Heritage Through Food H Mart, an Asian supermarket chain in the United States, holds a special place in Michelle Zahner's heart as it reminds her of her deceased mother and her Korean heritage. Rooted in traditions, Zahner recalls her mother's love and approval through food, which also brings a sense of connection to her Korean identity. Amidst the diverse culinary experiences, it's the family recipes from her mother and the taste of home that keeps her connected to her roots. When you walk into H Mart, an Asian supermarket chain in the United States, you'll find yourself immersed in a world of cultural delicacies and memories. The H stands for Han Ar Riem, a Korean phrase that translates to one arm full of groceries. Although the chain is well known for stocking a wide range of groceries, it's the intimate memories and connections to family that make it unique. For Michelle Zahner, the visit to H Mart is more than a shopping trip. It's a journey that takes her back to the days spent with her mother when she was alive. The smells of soy sauce eggs, cold radish soup, and stacks of seaweed hold an immeasurable emotional value for her. Caught between two worlds, and with her Caucasian father hardly familiar with the delicacies, Zahner is reminded of her struggle with her Korean identity. While exploring the aisles of H Mart, Zahner witnesses how food unifies people and helps them bond over shared memories. Families gather in the food court, reminiscing stories of their homeland while devouring familiar dishes. H Mart becomes a haven for connection and a chance to rediscover one's family roots. Growing up, food has always been an expression of love for Zahner. Her mother, Chongmi, showered her affection through mouth-watering dishes, remembering everyone's preferences. From Korean delicacies to caviar and lobster, Chongmi's love for food was contagious. Young Michelle would be rewarded with her mother's approval through her enjoyment of unique flavors, sparking a lifelong passion for culinary experiences. Trips to Seoul further solidified Michelle's connection with her Korean heritage. Fearless eating live octopus tentacles, delighting in pungent leftovers, and heartwarming reunions during family meals was when Zahner truly felt like a real Korean. It was through food that she won her mother's praise and acceptance. H Mart represents more than just an Asian supermarket, it's a treasure trove of memories, love, and heritage. For Michelle Zahner, the flavors of H Mart serve as a constant reminder of her connection to her late mother and her Korean roots, making it an essential part of her identity. Breaking Stereotypes Through Music Growing up under the strict rules of her mother Chongmi, Michelle, a half-Korean and half-white girl, experiences teenage rebellion and depression. In her search for a cure to her apathy, she discovers her passion for music and the power it has to shatter stereotypes. Persistently convincing her mother to buy her a guitar and taking lessons, Michelle finds a new purpose in life. Despite her mother's disapproval, Michelle's undeniable talent and determination take her from playing at local open mics to opening for renowned singer-songwriter Maria Taylor. This journey in music deepens her resolve to follow her dreams, even as it strains her relationship with her mother. Michelle was far from an ideal child, often defying her mother's strict rules, hiding in department stores, and causing public tantrums. As she grows older and enters high school, her rebelliousness evolves into full-fledged depression. It's during this difficult period that Michelle discovers music as a salve for her apathy, connecting deeply with songwriters like Isaac Brock from Modest Mouse. But the game changer is when she sees a live performance by Ye yeah, Ye yeah, Ye's fronted by Karen Oh, who, just like Michelle, is half Korean and half white. 
Karen O's stage presence shatters the typical, demure Asian stereotype, inspiring Michelle to take up music herself. Persistent and passionate, Michelle convinces her mother to buy her a guitar and lessons. She practices diligently, befriends a fellow aspiring musician from her English class, Nick, and starts sharing her songs on MySpace. Her dedication pays off when she lands a gig opening for Maria Taylor, an accomplished singer-songwriter. As Michelle performs on stage and receives genuine applause, she doesn't doubt that music is her true calling, and her dream of becoming a musician solidifies. However, her mother does not support her aspirations. The next day, when Chongmi dismisses Michelle's dreams at lunch in a Korean restaurant, Michelle storms out, widening the rift between them. Despite this, her love for music and desire to break boundaries only grows stronger. Mending Broken Bonds Following a tumultuous adolescence marked by fighting, poor academic performance, and strained relationships, Michelle's world is turned upside down when her mother, Chongmi, is diagnosed with cancer. Determined to make amends, Michelle dedicates herself to providing care and support during her mother's treatment, ultimately mending the wounds of their rocky past. Once a conflicted teenager, Michelle leaves her home after a violent altercation at a soul cafe. She finds solace in socializing with squatters and skipping school, but her mental health starts deteriorating with dark fantasies of death. Recognizing her daughter's struggles, Chongmi intervenes, arranging for therapy and an eventual enrollment into Bryn Mawr College. Distance seemingly proves helpful in their relationship when they part ways after one last heated confrontation. While attending college, Michelle comes to appreciate Chongmi's role as a dedicated homemaker, a realization reinforced by her postgraduate life in grimy apartments. However, a shattering phone call informs Michelle of her mother's cancer diagnosis, prompting a return home and a newfound desire to repair their strained relationship. A supportive boyfriend, Peter, joins Michelle as she embarks on a mission of redemption and care for her ailing mother. Disregarding her mother's objections, Michelle puts her life on hold and relocates to Eugene as Chongmi's primary caretaker. In an effort to foster a healthier lifestyle, she begins jogging and preparing her mother's favorite Korean dishes that are easy on the stomach during chemotherapy. Yet, as Chongmi's condition deteriorates, she loses her appetite and struggles with debilitating side effects. A particularly harrowing experience occurs during Chongmi's fourth day of chemotherapy, where she faces severe vomiting and an inability to leave her bed. Michelle stoically supports her mother, cleaning her vomit and providing solace in her time of need. However, when it comes time for Chongmi's oncologist appointment, Michelle and her father, Joel, discover the true severity of Chongmi's condition. Unable to stand or speak, Chongmi's distress is evident as she wails and scratches at the car door, desperate for escape. Moving her to the back seat for comfort, Michelle looks after her hallucinating mother, and the Zahner family is promptly redirected to the emergency room upon arrival at the oncology clinic. In facing the adversity of cancer, Michelle and Chongmi's relationship gradually reconciles. Focused on providing love, care, and support, Michelle earnestly strives to make amends for lost years, exemplifying the power of redemption and the enduring bond between mother and daughter. A mother's unwavering strength. Despite battling cancer and initially refraining from treatment, Chongmi regains her strength and determination to witness the wedding of her only daughter, Michelle. She demonstrates resilience and inspires hope in her family during this crucial event. Chongmi reluctantly underwent chemotherapy to fight cancer, but after seeing her sister suffer through the same grueling treatment, she made the difficult decision to call off any further sessions. Her dream of taking one final trip to her homeland, Korea, became her focus. However, her health continued to decline, leaving her weak and struggling during the journey. Upon arrival in Seoul, her health worsened even more, and her family battled with the decision of whether to connect her to a ventilator. In an unexpected turn of events, Chongmi sat up in her hospital bed, conscious and bewildered by their absence. They quickly prepared for her medical evacuation to Oregon, where Michelle planned a wedding in the hope of giving her mother the strength to live a few more weeks. Chongmi's determination grew stronger as the wedding day approached. 
With the help of friends and their traditional Korean food, she began to regain enough strength for short walks around their property. Motivated by the idea of being there to witness her daughter's special day and sharing a dance with her new son-in-law, she persistently fought against her deteriorating health. On the wedding day, Chung Mi appeared full of life in her traditional Korean attire, makeup, and a wig to cover her baldness. The mother, who once criticized her daughter, was now filled with sweet compliments. Their emotional vows left everyone teary-eyed, and Chung Mi's dance with Peter fulfilled her earnest desires. Although she had to retire to bed afterward, the day was undoubtedly a success that left a lasting memory. Michelle let loose and enjoyed the rest of the evening with her closest friends and her loving husband, both celebrating and cherishing the precious moments shared with her mother. Chongmi's perseverance and unwavering love for her daughter shined throughout the entire wedding, demonstrating the incredible strength she held within herself. Healing Through Food and Music Following her mother Chongmi's passing, Michelle finds solace in cooking traditional Korean comfort food and creating an album in a secluded cabin. As her music gains attention, she embarks on a tour with her band, eventually performing in Seoul where her mother's picture graces the album cover. She and her husband Peter spend two weeks in Korea, visiting places Chongmi wanted to see and sharing a memorable feast with family while embracing their cultural heritage. In the wake of her mother Chongmi's death, Michelle longs to be a gracious host to visiting family from Korea, her aunt, Nami Emo, and cousin Song Young. Embracing her mother's nurturing spirit, she prepares traditional Korean comfort food, a hearty vegetable and tofu stew called Dunjang Jigi, with the guidance of a YouTube culinary expert, Monkey. The dish strikes a chord with her relatives, providing nourishment and solace. Seeking further healing, Michelle turns to her passion for music. In a secluded cabin on her parents' property, she writes a collection of songs that come to form her album, Psychopomp. With her husband Peter and friends Nick and Colin, they transform the songs into an immersive bedroom recording studio experience. Little do they know that this album, released under the name Japanese Breakfast, would bring significant attention. Psychopomp's growing popularity allows Michelle to open for the talented Japanese-American singer-songwriter Mitsuki, embarking on a five-week tour and introducing her music to a wider audience. Eventually, Michelle's band headlined a cross-country tour, performing at major music festivals, and even traveling to Europe for shows in iconic cities. The pinnacle of their success arrives and Michelle and her band tour Asia, with a final stop in Seoul. Each performance satisfies not only the audiences but their taste buds as well, with local delicacies welcoming the band at each stop. When they reach Seoul, Michelle finds herself immersed in familiar flavors from her childhood, and the sold-out crowd enthusiastically embraces their music. Chomi's image, which adorns the cover of Psychopomp, captures a poignant moment as her mother's face is carried by fans through the streets of Seoul. With the tour concluded, Michelle and Peter decide to extend their stay in Korea for two weeks, honoring Chomi's last wishes and exploring all the places she desired to visit. Their trip culminates in a celebratory seafood feast accompanied by Nami Emo and her husband Emo Boo, reminiscing over abalone, scallops, and live spoon worms. To cap off the night, a karaoke session sees Michelle sharing the stage with Nami Emo, singing a childhood favorite, Coffee Han Jan, evoking fond memories of Chongmi and cementing their connection to their roots through shared experiences in food, music, and love. Ultimately, Crying in H Mart is a heartfelt exploration of the profound connections we share with our family, memories, and roots. Food emerges as a powerful symbol for love, and Michelle Zahner's journey emphasizes the significance of the ingredients, dishes, and stories that enrich our lives. Through her quest for understanding her Korean heritage, she transcends grief and discovers her own identity. This poignant memoir leaves readers with a message of resilience, reinvention, and the enduring power of love through food and memories. As Zahner learns to carry forward her mother's traditions, you'll come away with a renewed appreciation for the unique flavor and stories that make up the rich tapestry of our lives.